Hi everyone, and welcome to another Model Railway review from Class 47 Peter. And today's video is going to be something a little bit special because I'm going to be looking at some models that I have been very much looking forward to for a while now. And the models we're having a look at today are the all new Tooling Hornby Terriers. Now, this is going to be a double review where I'll be looking at not one but two of these models. This model is Rolvenden in the Kent and East Sussex Railway Blue livery and this model here is 2662 which this one is one of the preserved ones and this one is Martello in the Mournsall Southern Railway Green livery. This model was a pre-order. I have another Hornby Terrier on pre-order which is Stepney which at the time this video is being filmed and being uploaded all but two of the Hornby Terriers have been released so I'll be waiting for Stepney now to be released and I'll be looking forward to receiving that Rolvenden on the other hand was not a pre-order because uh, originally I didn't plan to get this model but the more photos I saw of this model the more I wanted it and so in the end I just couldn't resist and I had to have it and I think this one is in a beautiful blue livery in my opinion. Now it is worth mentioning that these models are both different. Rolvenden is the A1 which is how they looked when they were first built and 2662 is the A1X which is how they look later on after they had their upgrades. Right, so for a change I've pretty much just unboxed the model on camera as you just saw without in between talking about the packaging. The packaging that this model comes in, as you just saw me unbox, is the plastic ice cube packaging that we're all familiar with now. Inside the box we get the instruction manual for the model, although this is going to be the usual stuff that we've all seen before, as I've shown in past reviews, so I'll not be going through this it's all the usual stuff that we've seen before and what we're all used to seeing in there and we also get a little detail pack with some details in there which I shall be putting on the model later on now the first thing that I'm immediately drawn to is the livery I think that this livery is absolutely beautiful and this blue livery really does suit the terriers quite well I think and also it's something different to have on the layout as well in this livery and also blue happens to be my personal favourite colour and I do have, I'm sure you'll know, several other blue locomotives in my collection so in a way I couldn't really say no to a blue terrier because it does look good on this locomotive and it actually does suit this locomotive well. And the livery application has been very well applied there's no errors in the paintwork, it's all been very nice and evenly applied also the correct shade of blue as well and a beautiful shade as well and also the blue wheels as well which in my opinion really do finish off the livery rather well and also the crisp red lining on this model as well although on the top of the water tanks just here the crisp red lining on the top of there can be a little bit harder to see in certain lighting particularly such as this one it is there and in other lighting you can see it but in this lighting it is slightly more hard to see but that's not really a problem and it is there it's just that especially with a sunny day like today it does make it a little bit harder to see it but it is there and the crisp red lining that just looks really lovely on this blue livery moving on to the detail now as I mentioned earlier this is the A1 so this is how the terriers looked when they were first built 
and they really have captured the profile of the A1 really really well. You've got this detail here on the front separately fitted and painted as well as the separately fitted smoke box door darts as you can see and also rivets running across the smoke box door there a separately fitted hand rail on the top there and also we have separately fitted lamp irons as well on the locomotive as you can see and also a pre-fitted vacuum pipe as well we also have metal buffers as well on this model they're not sprung but to be quite honest really I don't really have much care for sprung buffers to be quite honest but they are made out of metal though which is nice to have and also these buffers are raised just like on the real terriers as per the prototype and also the detail on the buffers as well such as the rivet detail on them you know is really really nice to look at and it's been really well done off. Now the chimney is very nice as well now it is worth pointing out that when I first got this model there was a black mark on the chimney cap and so what I decided to do is to repaint it which I've done using Revel gold paint it does come painted gold already when you first get the model but I seem to prefer this gold paint that I've repainted on the chimney cap because it gives it that polished look to it we also have the rivet detail on the water tanks there as you can see which have been done very well as well as the Cantonese Sussex Railway logo which has been crisply applied and the print on that just looks fantastic there's the locomotive's name printed in the middle Rolvenden and we've also got the water filler caps as well on top of the water tanks they don't open but to be honest I don't really expect them to and it would probably be difficult to make them open and if they did it would probably make the model more expensive but they're there anyway and they're nicely detailed we've also got the separately fitted metal handrails as well on top of the boiler and also these details here which correct me if I'm wrong but I think they're called water breathers I think I might be wrong there we have glazing in the cab window portals and the window rooms have been painted and they do look nice we've also got the whistle as well as you can see they're separately fitted and nicely painted we've also got this this detail here attached to the dome which are the safety valves again they're nicely painted as well and we also have the washout plugs there as you can see now the inside of the cab interior is very nice the inside of the cab has been painted cream as you can see which does look really really good you know it's that that does look nice it's been done well as well even the floorboards there inside the cab they look nice as well and all the detail there in the cab interior has been painted and that adds to the detail of the model and that looks stunning one thing I have noticed though is that there's there's no detail on the dials but that's just a minor nickel thing though to be honest one thing I will point out though is that I did have when I first took the model out of the box to give it a run I noticed there was a glue mark in this area here now if you get one of these models and you find a glue mark on the model don't feel put off because there is a way to remove it what you do is, or this is how I did it get a cocktail stick dip it in some water and very lightly rub it over the glue mark and that will actually get rid of it and it got rid of it and it does work quite well so that's just a little tip again we have the metal buffers not sprung like on the front of the loco but I don't really care about that and we also have the NEM tension lock couplings as well that we get on both ends of the model on the rear cab windows you can see the guard irons there as you can see and there's even glazing in the rear windows as well we've also got the coal rail there on the bunker as you can see which 
this coal rail was fitted to the terriers on the Kentony Sussex Railway. I don't think any other terriers had them. I know obviously when the A when they had the modifications and became the A1X, which was the later versions, they had the double coal capacity. But that double coal capacity wasn't a coal rail like this, as you can see here on the model. So only for, at least from looking at the photos of most to see, only the Kentony Sussex Railway Terriers had these coal rails. I haven't come across any others that had them. And even into BR days these Kentony Sussex Railway Terriers still had the coal rails as well. Which I think is quite interesting. Also we have separately fitted lamp irons as well. We also have the steam pipe in here, as you can see, on both sides of the model. That pipe work has not been painted, however, although I will be doing that myself, so that's not too much of a problem. Something I didn't notice until now is the detail on the chassis frames. I mean, just look at that. I mean, that is stunning. So here's the other Terrier that has been unboxed off camera because I didn't think it was worth unboxing this model on camera beings I've already unboxed one on camera because it's going to be pretty much the same as the other one in terms of the unboxing and so this model, as I say, is 2662 Martello which is one of the terriers that's preserved and it's one of two terriers that I've seen in real life which this model I saw back at Barrow Hill in 2008 which you can find that video on my YouTube channel and beings one of the two terriers I've seen in real life <laughs> that was the reason why I wanted this one basically I've also got Stepney on pre-order as I said earlier in the video which is another of the terriers I've seen in real life and that one I got to stand in the cab back at the National Railway Museum in 2012 during the Railfest event now this livery is gorgeous it really is I mean I absolutely love this livery correct shade of green the beautiful white crisp lining which for me really sets this livery off and it lifts the livery I think in my opinion but the livery application is again just like the other one which you can just about glimpse behind there the livery application is superb and it's perfect nice even coat of paint no errors in it and it's it just looks stunning the numerals on the font have been crisply applied as well and it's the correct font and numerals as well so as this is the A1X there are detail differences with this one and the A1 version which was the earlier version for a start when I had the upgrades these being the A1X's they had the bigger boilers and the bigger drive wheels although I think they're only slightly bigger but as you can see the A1X is had that this model shows these tall lamp irons as you can see there which the A1X is had and so those have been replicated on the model and they are separately fitted and they look stunning we also have the steam condensing piping just here as you can see although alas this wasn't on all of the A1X's some of the A1X's I've seen in photos don't have the steam condensing piping in fact also some of the A1's also had the steam condensing as well and others didn't so not all the terriers look the same they all did defire one way or another for example, some had detail parts that others didn't. So some of them did differ from others. We also have the double coal bunker on this one with this part here, which I suppose you could call it an extension, which all but I believe one of the A1Xs did not have these. The one that didn't have it is 32636. Although the terriers on the Isle of Wight had the extended bunkers, so they didn't have these double coal capacities, but they did have the extended bunkers, which I believe Hornby will be making in the future. 
because they, in one of their engine shed blogs, they showed a diagram of all the parts, and there was an Isle of Wight bunker amongst the parts. So I have a feeling they will be making some of those in the future. This model has the Western Airs pump, as you can see here. Although not all the A1Xs had these, I have seen pictures of some A1Xs that don't have the Western Airs pumps. But then I have seen pictures where some of the A1s did have the Western Airs pump. So that's quite interesting. Another feature that's different on the A1X is the removal of the sandboxes on the front wheel arches as you can see here, or splashes, whichever you choose to call them. Although I think I have seen a couple of photos with one or two of the A1Xs that did still have the sandboxes on them, but most of them had the sandboxes removed. And also you get these little bits of detail here as well, on the steam chest, as you can see there, that's on both sides of the model, as you can see, and they look very nice and they've been painted as well. Ok, now there is one thing I want to talk about with this model, and I have placed the camera on the tripod for this, so I can do this a bit better. But basically, I noticed that the body shell on this model was a bit loose. If I turn the model upside down, basically, this part of the chassis was loose, which meant the body shell was loose, and therefore the body shell was a little bit wobbly. And in, upon closer inspection, I noticed that this screw here had not been tightened up very well at all. So what I had to do was, I had to take a small screwdriver, like this flat bladed screwdriver here, and tighten that screw up, and that's now tightened the body. And so it's no longer loose now. So, you know, I mean, I'm not going to have a go at Hornby for this. I mean, you, you could argue that they could check the models over when they receive them, but then in all fairness they shouldn't be receiving these models with quality control issues like this. You know, especially because the amount of money that we pay for them, they should really be in tip-top condition. So, in all fairness, you know, there's, I don't see any reason why these models can't have quality control checks at the factory before they get sent off to Hornby, because really the manufacturers shouldn't be receiving any models with quality control issues, the way I see it. Because it's not really fair, to be quite honest, and I do think it damages the brands as well, to be quite honest, especially with the amount of criticism that Hornby gets for the quality control issues that have happened. But, you know, it, it's been sorted now. But, you know, if you do get that problem, then all you have to do is just simply tighten the screw up. But, you know, really, the, the people at the factory should be doing that, really. They should be checking them over and making sure they're tightened up properly, rather than just simply sending them out for to simply get them because you know we shouldn't really be having to tighten the screws up on these ourselves but there we go but moving on to some of the other details we have lots of rivets on the front of the smoke box door as you can see there and on the smoke box pre-fitted brake pipe as you can see there and you have the locomotive's room number 2662 crisply printed on the buffer beam there and the numerals or the correct ones as well and like I say they're crisply printed again the we have metal buffers on this model they're not sprung but I don't really care because I don't really have much care for them the buffers being sprung but you know they are nice metal ones though and again the detail on these is very nice we also have the locos room number again crisply applied on the bunker as you can see there and again we have separately fitted lamp irons, as you can see. As well as the NEM tension lock couplings. Again fitted on the model. And some nice rivet details on the buffer beams. And again, another pre-fitted brake pipe. So here are the two Hornby Terriers, the A1 and the A1X, placed together side by side. You can also see the detailed differences between the two of them as well. And these really are beautiful locomotives and beautiful models. 
So for the detail, I think Hornby have got it bang on. Okay, so what I've done is I've added the pipes from the detail bags on these models. As you can see, I've added one on Rolvenden and with 262. I've also added another one there, as you can see, from the little detail bags. I've only added the one from each little detail bag on the model. But what I've also done is I've painted the pipe work, as you can see, on the boiler. And I've done that on both models, and I'm quite happy with that, and they do look really nice, I think. And I do think they look better when they're painted. So now we come to the running performance for the Hornby Terriers. So as you can see, Rolvenden is running on the downline. And 2662 is running on the upline. Now it goes without saying that these are very smooth runners, as you can see. Very smooth indeed. And this is how we expect them to run, straight from the box. And they're also fairly quiet models as well, the mechanisms. We're about to get a crossover of the two terriers. So yeah, these are very smooth runners. And you know, I do love the size of these models running around on the layout. So that now brings us on to the loaded test run for these two terriers. So 2662 is pulling three of the Batman bullied coaches. And Rolvenden is pulling these Mournsel coaches. The one beyond the loco is actually a Graham Farish double O gauge one. So they're both pulling three coaches. So that now brings me to my overall conclusion for the models. So overall, I think the Hornby Terriers are superb models. Hornby really have poured out the stops to bring us another great product. And at £80, you can't really go wrong. It will be interesting to see how these models compare to the upcoming Rails of Sheffield models which are more expensive, they're priced at £110. So I might get one of those and compare the two together, which could be interesting to see. If I do get one of those, I'll probably go for, because I do quite like Bodia in the Kenton East Sussex Railway line blue livery. So that would be quite nice to go with Rolvenden just here. And I did enjoy watching the development of these models, as you saw in the James May programme. Big Trouble in Model Britain. That was quite an interesting program to watch. But these models are superb models. I can't fault them. And they're going to be a great addition to the layout and to have in the fleet. So I do recommend that you buy one of these Terriers. I have two of them here. I have a third one coming. Which is Stepney, as I've mentioned before. So I'll be looking forward to receiving that. So, I definitely recommend you guys go out and buy one or more of these Hornby Terriers. Because they really are cracking models. So, well done Hornby. So that now brings me on to the end of this model railway review. Of the Hornby Terrier. Thank you very much for watching this video. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to the channel and check out all our other videos. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.